Hello everyone, I am Julian Morris with the Channel 5 News. In the headlines, Cabinet approves protocols to reopen the yachting sector seriously impacted by COVID-19 pandemic. The agriculture programs at three schools to benefit from a donation of $12,000 in inputs. And Calypsonians commended for their dedication to the art form in light of the cancellation of Carnival 2021. The details coming up. We are resilient and we will get through this together. But these are stressful times and it's important to also practice good self-care. It's normal to feel overwhelmed, anxious or afraid. But there is hope. Reach out to someone, connect with your friends, stay in touch with your community and know that you are not alone. We're in this together. This is a public service announcement from the Dominica Red Cross. Flow helps you stay connected to what matters. Simple plans and a better network mean that you can enjoy seven days of unlimited social messaging, three gigabytes of reliable data to use as you like, 700 local anywhere calls and texts with the always on prepaid plan, all for $29. Keep your number when you switch to Dominica's most reliable LTE network. Buy wherever you top up, switch to Flow. It only gets better. First stop in the news, Chief Justice of the Eastern Caribbean Supreme Court has appealed to judges to remain resolute in rendering justice in the face of last year's unwarranted vitriolic attacks. Chief Justice Pereira says these attacks have been made in response to unfavorable court rulings. In her address marking the opening of the new law year on Wednesday, the Chief Justice said this behavior undermines the administration of justice and legal officers who fail to speak are complicit. There is an area of grave concern emanating from certain quarters outside of the judiciary. I would be remiss were I not to raise them. Over this last year, we witnessed unwarranted and vitriolic attacks on the judiciary as an institution and on judges as individuals by members of the public. The frequency of these attacks is becoming alarming with the potential for causing grave harm to the safeguards which are entrenched in our constitutions for preserving and upholding the rule of law. On too many occasions over the past year, or bar associations and legal practitioners have had to speak out against such conduct. I wish to remind legal advisors as officers of the court and who seemingly stay silent in the face of these unwarranted attacks that they become enablers and complicit in the undermining of the administration of justice. This behavior must be publicly and vociferously rebuffed at every turn, as silence in the face of these attacks only serves to give them credence. The Chief Justice said an unfavorable court decision should not be the basis for personal attacks on judges. While it is proper to criticize a judicial decision and otherwise engage through the well-recognized process for appeals, it is quite wrong to engage in baseless personal attacks against a judicial officer and the judiciary as a whole, merely because a decision has gone against you. It is worth reminding that judicial officers take an oath to do justice according to law not according to man or woman. It was Aristotle who said, and I quote, at his best, man is the noblest of all animals. Separated from law and justice, he is the worst, end of quote. And so, let us seek to abide by the rule of law. 
Cabinet has approved protocols and guidelines to facilitate the reopening of the yachting sector. The yachting sector remains impacted by the effects of the COVID-19 pandemic. MP for Portsmouth and Minister for Trade Ian Douglas says the sector makes a significant economic contribution to the economy. Due to the COVID-19 pandemic, the sector has been closed since March 2020, similar to most destinations. Government is now reconsidering the reopening of the sector due to the increased interests and inquiries being received. Even with the risk of global travel, yachts are still very much interested in coming to experience rest and relaxation in Dominica. For example, the agents in Portsmouth have been receiving numerous requests from all categories in the yachting sector. Therefore, the reopening of the yachting sector would mark an opportunity to welcome more visitors to the destination. I'm happy to report that on Tuesday, January 13th, the Cabinet approved the general protocols and guidelines to be implemented for re-entry upon arrival. Travelers are required to wear masks at all times during the arrival process up to and including disembarkation and leaving the port of entry. Travelers must observe physical distancing. Travelers must also practice good respiratory etiquette and personal sanitization. They must follow all instructions of the health providers and officials. Before arriving in port, all cruisers must submit an online health questionnaire at least 24 hours before their arrival in port. They can do so by visiting the website dominicacovid19.dominica.gov.dm. Douglas says the Dominica ANC Port Authority, DASPA, and the police will establish a quarantine zone. Yachts will be required to remain in the quarantine zone for the duration of their stay unless otherwise cleared. While in the quarantine zone, vessels will be required to fly the color-coded quarantine flag to facilitate identification. There is a penalty for leaving the quarantine zone without medical clearance. Upon medical clearance, the vessel will be allowed to move to a cleared area of the harbor as established by DASPA. Captains will be expected to anchor in the quarantine zone and await clearance to disembark from the local authority. If the vessel is coming from the low, medium or high risk destination and remaining in port for longer than five days, a PCR test must be administered at the cost on day one and returned to their vessel for a mandatory five-day quarantine. They will be tested again on day five and await the results on their vessel. If the results of the PCR test done on day five is positive, they will be admitted to the COVID isolation unit until discharged. If the results of the test done on day five is negative, the crew will be deemed medically cleared. No more than 30 vessels at any given time will be allowed to dock and all yachts shall proceed to the cruise ship, Cabbage cruise ship berth at Prince Rupert's Bay only. We thank the yachting stakeholders for their patience and understanding during this difficult period and we will continue to collaborate with them for the continued development of the yachting sector. $12,000 of inputs donated to three schools and two institutions to further enhance the country's push towards agriculture. Andrea Louis has more. The distribution of inputs was conducted by the Project Implementation Unit of the Emergency Agricultural Livelihoods and Climate Resilience Project to further cultivate a stronger interest in small-scale agriculture. The Roosevelt Douglas Primary, St. Luke's Primary, Caleb Laura Primary, Barano Ote and the Center where Adolescents Learn to Love and Serve calls were among recipients of the inputs. 
Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Agriculture, Kira Paul, says the handing over of inputs to schools and organizations is a further boost to the backyard gardening project, which was started by the ministry in 2020. So building on that major milestone of backyard gardening that we implemented last year, we are now providing inputs that is valued at $12,000 to three primary schools, two organizations, and one sister ministry. And we expect that over 500 beneficiaries will take advantage of the high quality inputs that we are making available, such as agrochemicals, organic manure, and tools and of course other supplies as is visible. Paul says it is important to get youth on board with national level projects to ensure sustainability. So the provision of inputs to schools is a means by which we are promoting the adoption of good agricultural practices and nutrition at the foundational, foundational level, which is our schools and our homes um, and our communities. Furthermore, the exposure of our students at the schools to agriculture will promote entry into the field by engaging our students and communities to support the continued growth of the sector. This is one of our strategies for taking agriculture scale success to a much wider scale. Recipients of the inputs say the donation will be extremely useful to the institutions. We at Caleb John Laura, when I started, we did not have a school garden, but I understand not every child is academically inclined. And some of the children will start at school with agriculture, and this might end up being their livelihood in the future. And so even as COVID brought about so much uncertainty in food security, we want to start early. We also have a, a feeding program and we want to sustain our kitchen. We want our children to appreciate eating what we grow. The Kalinago Barana Ote is a tourism facility in the Kalinago Territory. And like all other tourism facilities in Dominica, we are feeling the impact of COVID-19 with the drastic drop in visitor arrivals, both stayover and cruise. In preparation for when visitors return to our shores in large numbers, and I believe they will return, we have embarked on a project to grow our own cassava, to grow our own local herbs for our teas, and our own vegetables for use in our kitchen. Minister for Agriculture Fidel Grant has released a statement seeking to address media reports this week which he says have misrepresented developments between government and farmers who are to be relocated for the development of the international airport in Wesley. The minister says the radio reports in question are untrue and therefore misleading. The government of Dominica dismisses radio reports aired this week that the farmers in the Joe Burton area in Wesley have been unceremoniously displaced to facilitate the construction of an international airport. These reports are false. In January 2020, the government accelerated its plans to construct the international airport. Based on numerous studies and technical advice, the Wesley site was deemed the most viable site on the island. To facilitate the construction of an international airport, an unencumbered site is required. As a result of this, a few residents are to be relocated. Following consultation, most of these residents identified the Joe Burton and Mambry area in Wesley as the preferred options for relocation. The government wrote to existing occupants on the site representing 12 squatter farmers. In the first quarter of 2020, notice was served to vacate the lands in preparation for the construction of homes. This would allow for adequate time to harvest crops already cultivated and to relocate to an alternate location. As government now moves forward with plans for construction, farmers interested in continuing their farming practices have been offered the option to regularize their arrangements with a view to relocate and establish new holdings. Some of these farmers who farm at the Joe Burton area have gladly accepted the offer and await the allocation of new plots to continue farming. The government of Dominica reiterates its commitment to the development of the agricultural sector and the empowerment of citizens to contribute to national food security. The government reassures the public that it will prioritize the interests and well-being of every Dominican citizen as it embarks on the construction of an international airport. We invite every Dominican to join in the collective effort to advance nation-building.
You are watching Channel 5 News. We'll have more after this. A new in-home experience is here. All your services bundled into one simple plan. Faster, more reliable Wi-Fi so that you can binge, play and stream uninterrupted. Unlimited flow local landline minutes mean you can talk and talk and talk. Plus the best in TV entertainment with over 120 channels and 29 in HD. All for $160 a month with the new All-In Bundle. With flow, it only gets better. We are strong, we are resilient, and we will get through this together. But these are stressful times, and it's important to also practice good self-care. It's normal to feel overwhelmed, anxious, or afraid, but there is hope. Reach out to someone, connect with your friends, stay in touch with your community, and know that you are not alone. We're in this together. This is a public service announcement from the Dominica Red Cross. Calypsonians have been commended for their dedication to the art form despite the cancellation of Carnival 2021. Here again is Andrea Louis with more. Friday, 15th January is the deadline for the submission of entries in the first ever virtual Calypso Mona competition. Calypsos have already begun to receive widespread airplay on radio stations and widespread distribution via social media platforms. Following the receipt of songs on CD, 30 Calypsonians will be selected to go to the semi-finals on 30th January and 15 will compete in the finals on 13th February. President of the Calypso Association, Davidson, the Observer Victor, says the idea to host a virtual Calypso Monarch competition was proposed by the membership of the association. The idea came from the members because what we were trying to do, we had the very first option we came up with was to try to have the show the normal way but not with the elimination part the, the live part of it and then we we came up with where the king would would remain as king and join only in the finals then we would use the finalists of last year to come down to the semi-finals and then the quarter finalists and the people who come in for new will go down to the elimination rung where we have in the CDs. And from different ideas and different, including the king felt he wanted to come down like everybody else. As regards the 2020 Calypso King, Observer explained the king will hold on to his monarch title until things return to normal. So in the meeting we had, the general meeting, the body decided, okay, in as much there's a lot of confusion like that, let's just, if we say it's a special year, let's just cancel what we have right now, our, com our normal competition, suspend it. So the king is not interfered with, the crown is not interfered with because the king won the crown in a different type of competition. So let's just send that back to 2022 and let us just have a special show. If push come to shove and we have to, to like 2022, this, the same situation um, exists, we will repeat what we do this year. The virtual Calypso Monarch competition will take place at the Old Mill Cultural Center. And Railway, Channel 5 News. And women teachers around the island to benefit from an empowerment workshop this week. This is among the aims of the Status of Women Committee of the DAT, Public Relations Officer of the Dominica Association of Teachers, Juanita Carbon, says teachers from all four education districts will benefit from the workshop. The Dominica Association of Teachers Status of Women's Committee will engage some of its members in a training workshop under the theme Empowering Women as Leaders. The training will be held face-to-face -face and via Zoom from the 15th to the 22nd of January 2021. The face-to-face -face session will be held on Friday, 15th January from 9 a.m. at the Pastoral Center at Mount Bruce. Carbon says the empowerment workshop will focus on the holistic development of women educators. Some of the topics will include empowering women as leaders, managing finances during a crisis, coping strategies in times of crisis, 
self-care and wellness, among others. Facilitators will include Dr. Valde Henry, Ms. Rosamond Rule, Ms. Mrs. Joanne Rule Carrot, Ms. Yvonne Alexander, Ms. Nadia Riviere, Ms. Isabella Apprentice, and Mr. Donald Bacasio of the NDFD. Flow helps you stay connected to what matters. Simple plans and a better network mean that you can enjoy seven days of unlimited social messaging, three gigabytes of reliable data to use as you like, 700 local anywhere calls and texts with the always on prepaid plan, all for $29. Keep your number when you switch to Dominica's most reliable LTE network. Buy wherever you top up. Switch to Flow. It only gets better. We are resilient and we will get through this together. But these are stressful times and it's important to also practice good self-care. It's normal to feel overwhelmed, anxious or afraid, but there is hope. Reach out to someone, connect with your friends, stay in touch with your community and know that you are not alone. We're in this together. This is a public service announcement from the Dominica Red Cross. A new in-home experience is here. All your services bundled into one simple plan. Faster, more reliable Wi-Fi so that you can binge, play, and stream uninterrupted. Unlimited flow local landline minutes mean you can talk and talk and talk. Plus the best in TV entertainment with over 120 channels and 29 in HD. All for $160 a month with the new all-in bundle. With flow, it only gets better. To end the news, the headlines again. Cabinet approves protocols to reopen the yachting sector seriously impacted by COVID-19. The agriculture programs at three schools to benefit from a donation of $12,000 in inputs. And Calypsonians commended for their dedication to the art form in light of the cancellation of Carnival 2021. You may access the news on our YouTube channel. On behalf of the production team, I am Julian Morris. Thank you for watching. Join us tomorrow.